Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped. Last part we start off tier 3, and now, cutscene. So, you pesky little rats aren't going to back off, eh? Just you continue to gather crystals and see what I do. Sure. With that said, now we are entering high time. Which, for its difficulty curve at this point in the game, is arguably the hardest level for one main reason. This is the first level that has a death route in it. Meaning, if you want to get everything in this level, uh, don't die. <laughs> at least until you reach the death route. With that said, I don't think there's any boxes on that route, so if you want to go for the crystal and box gem now and get the purple gem that's here later, you very well can do that. Also notably, in development, it wasn't the purple gem here. I believe it was originally going to be the blue... No, the red gem, I think. Those gems traded places a lot. With that said, it's another one of these levels. There's a new enemy type here. Actually, no, technically two. Uh, there's these flamethrower people. that They don't use flamethrowers, but they throw flames. Either way. Uh... They are probably one of the more annoying enemies in the game because you actively cannot kill them until, like, the last third of the game. Not even. Maybe last fifth. And because of that, you have to make sure you time yourself carefully, otherwise you're going to take some dumb hits. And take it from me, I've, uh, I've taken some dumb hits <laughs> in my day. With that said, the scorpions here are probably still one of the more annoying enemies just because... I swear sometimes it's the, the distance just doesn't feel right for their hitbox. Particularly an insane, but that's more so a concurrent issue with that entire game rather than just this level type. Also, seeing this particular color palette reminds me, a fun little thing about these levels is that I believe they were confirmed to have been based even slightly off of Disney's Aladdin. Uh, to the point that's why the sword bearers are in red and black clothes, similarly to Jafar, or the knights in the first, like, ten minutes of the movie. I guess guards is better than knights, uh, term-wise, and hence why the monkeys also wear purple. I don't know why, but I, I just find that cool, because I really like Aladdin. Not my favorite era Disney- Is that still Renaissance Disney, actually, now that I think about it? I think it is. My, either way, my favorite of those is either Mulan or Hercules. Beauty and the Beast is probably the best one in a lot of ways, but that's just because I like to make that distinction. Too bad about those live-action remakes. Oh god, they're probably going to do a Hercules one at some point. Oh. Ah, well. If they get Danny DeVito to somehow play Phil in, real, in the live-action version 2, that could turn out alright. <laughs> Mind you, I just like Danny DeVito. Also, something I won't be showing off in this LP, because I'll get to this own game series eventually. Uh, Crash 3, I think, was the first Crash game to have a demo for a Spyro game in it. Uh, notably, if you press, uh, I think, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, and square, I want to say, off the top of my head. On the title screen, you just unlock one of the levels from Spyro 1. Cool, but uh, admittedly... I say I'll get the Spyro at some point, but I also the probably won't be for a while, because I'll be real, I grew up playing Spyro on the GBA, of all things, so I played Season of Fire of I and Ice, so I, I have a bit of a weird experience with Spyro. And then I played Hero's Tale, which I thought was alright back when, probably won't like it as much nowadays, because I look back at some of the collision stuff, and it's like, what? And after that, I played... I think that's when I played Enter the Dragonfly, or whatever the name of the fourth game on GameCube and PS2 was. And then I played... Was it Legend of Spyro? The first one in that weird little trilogy of, like, darker games with the female dragon that I can't remember the name of. I didn't grow up playing the original trilogy, and uh, honestly, looking back, uh, there's a reason I even haven't gotten the remake trilogy yet, because... I, I think it's a bit too collectatani for my tastes. Although the Amanda Show credits theme being in the first game might be enough to make me do it just for the meme. Also, that was the entire death route. It's just the main level design, but harder. But you get the purple gem at the end of it. But don't leave the level at that point, because you can just commit suicide after grabbing the purple gem, and then you'll be back right before the death route. Meaning you can get everything in this stage in one go, which is generally the way I recommend you complete crash levels, because I don't know about you. I don't like backtracking that much. <laughs> Not a favorite of mine.
honestly, looking back though, I think these levels, this level theme rather, while I think it has some of my favorite music and visuals, might be my, if not my least favorite, my second least favorite, just to travel back through either just for playing normally or going for any of the bonus stuff like the time relics. Because there's such long levels in my eyes compared to some of the other ones. Like, it's these and the Egypt-themed levels that are like, holy shit, can you calm down a little bit with the length? And then there's certain other levels that make that even worse. Though I think the second Egypt level is the longest level in this game. It's the... Was it Cold Hard Crash that had the longest speed run in Crash 2, or was that... I can't remember what that was. Like, I can distinctly remember having trouble with certain speed runs when going for the relics in Insane Trilogy. Crash 1, it was the bridge levels because the pill-shaped hitbox can really screw you over. <sighs> Crash 2, what would have it been? I think I had some trouble with some of the... No, wait, it was the sewer levels. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was especially the sewer levels. That's right, that's right. I think in this game's case, I didn't have as many problems going for the trophy for, like, getting all the gold relics. I'll talk more about what that means again later on. But I want to say it was... One of the water levels. Maybe. Either way, uh, that's that level. It's a level. The purple gem's pretty important, and we can actually use that now to go back and do the, uh, the, the purple gem path in the level we covered, I think, the last part. But I'm gonna wait until after we finish a tier, generally, to do that. With that, it's now time for our next level, Road Crash. If you can't tell by the little icon there, it's time for another motorcycle level. And this one's more or less second versus same as the first. The level design's gonna be a bit more treacherous. There's gonna be a few more pits in the way. There's gonna be some boxes that are in hard to reach places. Boosters that are in a bit more perilous places as well as some more cop cars. But if you beat the first level and either got the box gem or the crystal, you can just do the same thing here. Go through one time to getting the boxes, go through a second time actually racing. With that said, something I should note is that you actually can't straight up die in these levels from my memory. Uh, I think if you fall down a pit or anything, I want to say it's just you lost some time and you might have lost your first place status because the other cars would have passed you. So in a lot of ways, these are technically the easiest levels in the game. And honestly, even though the relics aren't too bad. <laughs> Uh, for the most part. For the most part is the key word there. <clears throat> Those boxes there are some of the trickier ones. Because uh, what happens when you land from a jump, especially after you get a boost, is you let out a shockwave similarly to like the hyper ground pound. But sometimes one of those boxes, especially in the Ensign Trilogy from my memory, likes to be a bit of a rebel and uh, won't get broken. I've had that happen a couple times in certain levels throughout the series. And I think there's a case or two in, like, Wrath of Cortex where that happens. It's been a long-ass time since I played Wrath of Cortex, though, so I'm not entirely certain if I'm remembering that correctly. I should actually check if my new laptop can, like, emulate that enough to the point where I can at least play it casually to revisit it. Mind you, at this point, RetroArch's probably getting to the point where I'll be able to do that, no problem. Although... Uh, but I do the PS2 version or the GameCube version or the Xbox version. Who am I kidding? There's no Xbox emulators. Yet. Actually, I actually think there are a couple, but they're mostly like on console or something. Hmm. Either way, that was Road Crash, but you may have noticed I messed up and didn't get the crystal, so it's time for our first speed up thing. Uh, similarly to Crash 1 and Crash 2, though, whenever I have to revisit a level to grab something I couldn't get before, like another gem or boxes we couldn't grab, I am speeding up that level and playing the Insane Trilogy's version of the song for that level until we get to the new stuff. In this case, since it's just me actually, you know, doing the race right and not going off the road for too long, it's just a straight up level speed up. Again, these races aren't too hard. With that said, sometimes the motorcycle's control is partnered with the wheelies can make things hard enough to control that you might mess up enough to cause problems. And with that, we're already on to the final level of Tier 3. Okay, I say it like it's still we're going upwards like in Crash 2 Space Station, but uh, no, it's more so just Platform 3 in a way, isn't it? Hmm. Welcome to Doubleheader. 
Well, you've crashed a few parties before, but I never expected you to make it this far. If you don't turn back, I will inflict a thousand years of suffering on you and the entire universe! All right. Welcome to Double Header, which is the third and final variant of the Medieval Times thing. And an immediate difference with this level in the Japanese version is this lab assistant enemy right there. Uh, in the Japanese version, that enemy only has one head, meaning that the level's name... Kinda lost in translation there, assuming they kept it the same. Uh, actually, let me see, is it called that still in Japanese? Yeah, I'm not, it, it probably is. <laughs> And there is one notable bug in this level, but it's not going to come into play until the bonus round. With that said, it's just another one of the medieval levels. Watch out for the frogs, sometimes they can be annoying. The knights might catch you off guard with their swaying. Watch out for the wizards and their tracking shots, because they might get hit there. It's kind of the thing about the way Crash handles its level curves where so sometimes you won't see a level aesthetic for a while and then you'll just have a new one and it's the same thing but harder. It's kind of one thing I like about games like Mario games and even Sonic games where and each level's mechanics is only to itself and therefore any problems that that aesthetic has isn't spread out over a long period so you get the easy versions of it and the hard versions of it all at once. Like, yeah, there's the occasional ice level in a Mario game outside of the ice world, but that's where most of them are, for instance. I say that and immediately think of uh, New Super Mario Bros. Wii, of all things. As well as, uh... Well, no, that's still New Super Mario Bros. Wii. That's 9-7. I still have to play all the way through Wii U. I've had a, I've been distracted a lot through the Wii U and Onwards era. <laughs> partially by LLPing. Partially just by going for a lot of platinum trophies I probably shouldn't be on. PS4. Speaking of which, Yakuza 4 is going much better than Yakuza 3 did, because Yakuza 3's minigame trophy was an asshole. By the way, uh, in this particular bonus round is the bug I mentioned earlier. There's going to be an exclamation point crate we have to hit in this portion. And sometimes, if you hit it, uh, the crates that are supposed to appear when you hit it just won't. For no reason. Uh, thankfully it's not game-breaking, you just have to die and retry the bonus section for them to spawn. Hopefully. Assuming it doesn't happen twice in a row, which it probably mathematically can, it's just... unlikely. Otherwise, this bonus level isn't much more from what we've seen. The one tricky part of it otherwise is the part I actually just did a jump cut over, where... My brain sometimes forgets I have a double jump, and therefore I don't double jump over the TNT crate. You need to reach another crate after you hit the exclamation point crate. But that's just my brain short-circuiting, because... Maybe it's just because I'm so used to playing Crash 2 more than any other Crash game. But I just don't process the fact I have a double jump sometimes. And it's weird, because I know I'm probably a very rare person in that regard, because a lot of people play, like, Crash 3... Or actually, no, more or less any Crash game after this, even the Game Boy Advance ones, and go, yeah, we got a double jump, because even the, the GBA 2, uh... Oh, what the hell was the name of them? Uh, Entranced, I think, was one of them, and I can't remember the name of the second one. They had the power-ups, too. And I, I need to get to those at some point, because they're honestly relatively decent Crash games, until you have to do the relics, from my memory. <laughs> Collision can also be a little bit wacky. Still, for what they were on the Game Boy Advance, it's impressive. I've seen some impressive GBA games. For instance, that Asterisk and Obelisk game that is a fully functioning 3D platformer on the GBA. Sure, it runs at like 12 FPS, but I'm used to that. I play Ocarina of Time sometimes. Either way, that's double header. It's just the hardest variant of the medieval levels. And that's also the end of Tier 3. It's time for our boss fight against N Trophy. I think N stands for Nefarious. I forget if you already said that or not. Uh, honestly, this character has very little impact on me. Either way, uh, he's going to be talking and doing the talky bits, so uh, take it away, Entropy. Ah, you little vermin are way too stupid to understand what you're getting yourselves into. This time, you've done it. Ah, 
Now you're on my time, you little skunk. Give me the crystals. Whoa, audio got crackly there for a second. Sorry about that. Either way, Entropy is probably the most pattern-based boss in the game, ultimately. Yeah, they're all pattern-based, but his is very recognizable in how it grows. He shoots a fireball at you, you have to jump over. Then he sends shockwaves across the platform, seem to jump or dash under, should the case be. Then he makes a shockwave, makes platforms to him, you walk over, you spin him, and you do damage. Second round, same as the first, only now he sends two fireballs. One you need to jump over, and the other you need to slide under, and then it repeats from there. With that said, uh, the platforms that you need to use to reach him do get harder in platforming as you go, to the point where I die more often than I like to admit on the third phase. But that said, the boss fight's still easy. Honestly, I don't think... I, I think the only boss fight in Crash 3 I would say is hard is the final boss, and that's more so partially due to me being A, unattentive in certain regards, and B, there being a lot more to keep track of than you'd expect compared to the rest of the game's difficulty curve for boss fights uh, in the final boss. More on that in a while. Either way, uh, one accidental death later, Entropy is usually a boss that goes down pretty easily. My time is up. But yours soon will be, too. And for beating him, we get an interesting ability, the Death Tornado Spin. To spin longer and faster, or to glide, mash the square button while you're jumping. It's essentially a uh, hover. You insolent, insignificant morons! By defeating Entropy, you have placed us all in grave risk! <laughs> Crash, Coco, you must realize that this time twister machine is very delicate. Without Dr. Entropy's constant care and control, who knows what it will do? You should realize by now, Cortex, that Crash doesn't think. So trying to ask him to is asking a bit too much. But with that, that's tier three done. So now it's time we go save. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 5, we're actually going to start off by backtracking back to tier 2 now that we got the purple gem and grabbing a few gems we couldn't before along the way before heading on to tier 4. See you guys then.